So Ed and I are taking a look at this hand. It is at the start of the show, so we are just looking at the action starting here. What happened pre-flop was Peter, under the gun, plus one, raised with ace-queen uh, uh, suited. I think that is a fine raise. I called with pocket eights, and then Wayne called out of the small blind, basically closing the action for uh, another... I believe uh, 15 so he called the $20 raise what do you think of calling out of position with the Queen Jack suited there I mean I do it every time so. yep <laughs> I think it's pretty good yep it's it's fine so we get off to the flop here and what we see is that on the flop Peter is going to continue the aggression and so I asked myself is this a good continuation bet? He is going to be uh, second of two players with the initiative on the Jack-8-4 board. I look at it and say, well, he's got two overs and a club draw and a runner-runner straight. Well, I should say a runner-runner club draw. So how do you balance these kinds of things in making that C bet into two players? I, I like the C bet. I would make it here a lot. I, I, I like C betting this type of board texture, this very sort of loosely connected board, especially without, without a flush draw on it. So it's Jack eight, four The reason I like C betting these boards is because almost every hand is going to hit this board. Like uh King, queen, queen, Jack, Jack, 10, 10, nine. I mean, King, queen, not really, but, but uh, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8, 7, 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4. I mean, everything's got a gut shot. You know, queen, 10, jack, 9, 10, 8, 9, 7. You know, all, all these hands hit the board. Now, you might say, well, if all these hands are hitting the board, why do you like c-betting? And the reason is because I expect to get called uh, in one and possibly two spots on this board. And then on a lot of turn cards, a lot of turn cards are going to kind of brick out, like a deuce or a three or, you know, just, just not be that threatening, a four you know, uh, and on those cards, I can follow up with a turn bet, and I'm going to expect to, even if, t say, two people called me on the flop, let's say my C-bet got called, you know, a deuce rolls off, you know, it doesn't have to be a deuce, again, there's a lot of cards, a five, a six, even, you know, a four, maybe even an eight, uh, like, there's a bunch of cards where I can bet the turn, and I'm, I'm really going to expect both players to fold. Yeah, so I think in the course you called this a Type 2 board, right. and I like the designation. It took me a while to appreciate it, but Type 1 boards, you fire once and you're probably done. Type 2, if you're going to fire at it, you're probably going to need the two barrels. Right. And so that made sense to me. And looking at this, you know, ideally you'd want to be in position for this kind of thing, but having the two overs, the back door draws gives you a lot of cards that you can continue on. Right. And because most people are going to have a weak fit, they are not going to be able to handle two streets of aggression. Right, exactly. All of those things go together in this. Whenever we're making these decisions on continuation betting, there is going to be a lot of factors. Well, we're out of position to one. We're going to have to two barrel. And there is no magic formula anymore about should we do this or not, but you take those factors and weigh it together. Whether you, even though you don't have a formula, at least knowing what are the major decisions, things that factor into your decision are important. Right, I will say one thing about the bet sizing here. Now, I, I don't play in LA and things are a little bit different in LA. People are, you know, stickier in LA, especially, you know, on the flop. But, you know, here in Vegas, I, I would tend to bet a little bit less than this 60 because this is kind of uh, close to a full pot bet. And the reason is because I actually want the calls. I want the marginal calls. I mean, nobody, if I bet 60, I mean, somebody with ace-jack is, you know, going to call whatever, right? But what I want is I want to make sure that the guy with 8-6, you know, calls once, or the guy with the gut shot, like, you know, 6-5. I want to make sure that that player goes ahead and calls the flop because, you know, they're probably going to be folding the turn. If my plan is bet the flop, and then if a, you know, a good card comes off on the turn bet again, well, I want all those marginal hands to call on the flop. So I want to make sure my bet sizing kind of goes along with that idea. Again, here in Vegas, I'd be, uh, uh, I think this was a little bit large in a Vegas game because I would expect, you know, if you bet 60 and the guy's sitting there with the 6-5, the, the gut shot, 
you know, people are going to be like, eh, I don't know if I want to pay 60 for a gut shot. Whereas if you bet 30 or 40, you know, a lot of those people will, will come along. So, so I would tend to bet a little bit less here in Vegas, but again, in LA, you know, it's entirely possible that they're going to come along with whatever for 60. So, that, so if that's the case, then, then the bet sizing is fine. Okay. So now the decision is on me and it's been so long since I played this hand. It's really not me anymore. It's right. just some guy that looks like a pirate as I heard in the commentary on this one. Okay. So I think the flat is absolutely fine here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, for the same reasons that I like double barreling here, you know, raising, I mean, raising is just overwhelmingly likely to, to, to kind of win this pot outright. I mean, there's not, there's just not, I mean, he has to have an overpair really for, for you to expect to get much action when you raise. And, you know, I mean, if he's got an overpair, you can get action later. You're not really in that much state. I mean, it's just, there's not a ton of reason to raise here. Nope. And so I just flatted. And Wayne, of course, he actually caught a piece of this. Which, again, he's usually going to do because of the type of board it is. But he caught kind of a, a particularly good piece of it, I guess. Right? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so now we got 250 in the pot. And uh, the effective SPR is be or stack to pot ratio on the turn is about 2 at this point. So I know I'm thinking, how do I get all of the money in? Sure. And it's going to be relatively easy. It's got a nice... Um, bet bet is going to get it in without a lot of thought. So, was this a good card for Peter to barrel? I said this is probably one of the worst cards in the deck, right? For him, I you know the nine it, again. Every hand hits this board. Well, guess what? The nine hits almost every one of those hands. You know, so if they if he's caught, you know, if someone's calling with the queen ten gut shot. Well, that got there. Queen nine gut shot. Well, he caught a nine. You know, a d queen jack. Now he's got top pair and a gut shot. Jack 10, now he's open-ended. Jack 9, now he's got two pair. 10, 8, now he's open-ended with a pair. 9, 8, now he's got two pair. You know, all those, every single one of those hands that was sort of marginal on the flop has now improved in some way. And if they improve on the turn, they are not folding. Right, well, yeah. right. I mean, you would think so. You know, that that's sort of the general idea, at least. So, yeah, for sure, with two calls here, I mean, with, with, with two callers, again, two callers is not necessarily bad on the flop, but once this card comes, now you have to expect that it, at very least, at least one of the players is going to probably want to continue playing. So I absolutely like shutting down here on the turn. Yep. He was looking for the deuce of stars on right. this, and that is not what came. Well, again, it doesn't have to be like the worst, you know, it doesn't have to be the brickiest card. I mean, part of the beauty of this board is that kind of a lot of cards are bricky on this board, but the nine of spades is like whatever the opposite of that is. <laughs> it is right yeah. in the war yeah. zone. Yes. So, yep, he checks. And at this point, when it comes around to me, I am just going to be thinking, how can I size my bets uh, to get it all in? I'm thinking I would make a 180-ish dollar bet here. Let's see. All right, well, clearly um, my algorithm is exactly right. the same today <laughs> as it was it. before. Right, right. Yeah, that's an interesting fold there when he folds the, the top pair. I mean, that's, to me, that's, so obviously I like your bet. I mean, you have to bet there. I think the size is, you know, fine. Um... I mean, maybe slightly small. I, I don't, it's fine. It doesn't matter. Um, he, he, the thing is that, that that he folded the top pair there, which is interesting, right? I mean, obviously, I, I think at this point, you, you don't like that, right? But, no, I don't like it. Right. But uh, it's it's an interesting fold because, because I mean, he's has one of those hands that we just said, you know, well, if they improve, they're not folding. Now, it's not... They, he didn't improve much because he just did, kind of improved to a gut shot is really what he improved to. And, you know... Well, and, and top pair, okay kicker. Right, I mean, he had that to begin with, right? And, and so maybe maybe his thinking is, well, I've got two opponents, and now uh, probably one of those two players has, has improved on this card maybe more than I have. Um, you know, I mean, that's that's definitely not... I mean, and the other thing is, okay, now he calls 180, and now the, the three or whatever your deuce of stars rolls off on the river, and now he checks and you shove, because it's, you know, you've oh, yeah, only got absolutely 250 shoving. left, but he has to expect that, and then it's like, well, am I calling down with Queen Jack? And, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I could see it, you know, it kind of depends on 
what kind of range he thinks you're going to have when you bet the turn there. Uh, but but he's right if he's thinking that, you know, you're going to have something a lot of the time. You know, you just are mm-hmm. in that spot. Um, and, you know, I, I, don't, I don't hate the fold. I don't hate it from his perspective i you know again it depends it, it depends on what he thinks of your of your you know bar- turn barreling range there but but he's right to think that you're going to have something a lot of the time and and you know and a lot of the time that's going to beat queen jack i mean you know what else could you have really you could have something like 10 9 you know i could see you'd probably bet 10 9 right yeah 10 9 i was thinking what would i be betting here you could have jack 10 i could have jack 10 i could have uh, all kinds of spade plus uh, right. Pair. So you'd have had something on the flop, like maybe like ten eight of spades, and then now you caught a spade draw, or like you know eight seven of spades. But even there, I mean, even there, if he's calling you there, I mean, you've got a ton of outs with those hands. So you know there, and then there's a lot of spots where he is drawing really thin. I mean, you've got jack nine, you've got you know nine eight. He's drawing very thin. You've got a straight. You know, really, honestly, you've got a straight sort of a significant percentage of the time. You could definitely have queen 10, um, I think, yeah. you know. And uh, it's not as dangerous, you know, because you're probably not going to have 10-7. And, you, you know, and it doesn't make a straight on the bottom end. Like, if it was jack-8-5 and then the 9 comes, now you can have 7-6 uh, as well. So, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it's 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 a tight fold, but I, I kind of, you know... And I, I think like it's using the, the concept of leverage. Wayne is a uh, prop out in L.A., so he spends a significant time at the table. And he he's pretty sure that if he calls 180, he's actually calling 180 plus 240. For sure. I mean, for, you know, he has to expect that 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 river bet's coming, you know, a lot, right? Right. Yeah. So... There we go, and I believe I just ended up taking this down. Peter doesn't have much play left at this point. Right. And there we are. Okay, so we've 